prologue. You want to fly? You got to give up the shit that weighs you down. Toni Morrison, Song of Solomon. The Camino Português de Santiago, or Portuguese Way, is a Christian pilgrimage trail of about 205 kilometers that starts at the cathedral in Porto, Portugal, and ends at its architectural namesake in Santiago de Compostela in Spain. However, it isn't just for the dogmatically inclined. It's also traversed by people of all backgrounds and for all kinds of different reasons, though commonly in connection with personal growth. However, it's also just a magnificent and interesting scenic week-long walk. For many years I felt that I'd become a shell of a person one with a hard protective casing to the outside world and a deep sense of emptiness on the inside. I was now ready to start searching for the essence of who I really am and to once again become whole. However, I was under no illusion that this pilgrimage was going to fill my shell to the brim, not even halfway, but I certainly believe that it was as good a place as any to start the journey back to myself. At the end of the day, my shoes came off and I started to peel off my socks very, very slowly. I have to say that this was not an enjoyable moment as they were soaked through with masses of clear tissue fluid. The associated fragrance also gave me a little more to think about and then I could see the damage. Both of my forefeet looked like freshly prepared chapatis, puffed out and steaming hot. The morning was spent working my way from Rubiais to the town of Valencia, which is situated on the south bank of the Minho River, which forms the border with Spain. Mother Nature greeted me with an amazing display of early morning light as I moved along forest-lined paths, occasionally crossing small streams by magnificent arched stone bridges. I remember stopping at one particular bridge, where I'm pretty sure I heard the quiet snoring of a goblin rising up from below. It really was like a scene from a fairy tale. Prior to arriving in Redondela, I stopped to share a moment with two very cute dogs. 
For some reason, I've always had an affinity for these furry fellas, perhaps as they're a living, breathing expression of loyalty, innocence, and pure, unadulterated joy. They simply present themselves to the world as they truly are, with absolutely no pretense of any kind. What you see is what you get. It's too bad that we supposedly intelligent humans can't seem to learn that this kind of simple, straightforward existence would solve so many of our problems. The after effects of the Elixir de Esperon seemed to linger with me well into the evening as I prepared my dinner of seasoned mussels, bread and beer. Later, as I drifted off into a deep slumber, I started to feel a sense of melancholy. I realised that tomorrow my journey would already be over, and I just now reached a state of being where I wanted to keep walking forever. I just didn't want to stop. As my Camino was coming to an end, I started asking myself, okay then, so what now? What are you going to do after it's over? As if a switch had been flicked, I began to suddenly sense the same anxiousness that I'd had prior to taking my first step. Even though I'd been able to forget my personal life challenges while being totally immersed in the day-to-day -day life of a pilgrim, it would soon be time to return to reality. And it seemed that everything that I'd left out of my backpack was still going to be waiting for me to pick up and carry once again. But surely things would be different after this journey, right? Maybe the point of a pilgrimage isn't to actually remove your problems, but to earn new tools and perspectives in order to be able to better deal with them. So, perhaps the purpose of a pilgrimage is not about forgetting, but about remembrance. The shining of the light of wisdom and love on one's personal darkness so that it can be cleansed and healed to the core. Epilogue Even during the darkest times of my life, I've been able to recognise them for what they were, life's defining moments. They've taught me to be mindful, to become acutely aware of being in the here and now. And while many times I've had no clue of what was to come, I 100% knew that I never wanted to go back to living a comfortably numb life. Walking the Camino Portugues was the first major step in walking the Via Negativa, a life focused on eliminating unnecessary things, all that which hides the path to the source of cosmic joy. Mm -hmm.